Hello, everybody. This is Calvin Butler with the RBBS Logistics Learning Center and the National Dispatchers Network. And today is Saturday. Um, so, and since today is Saturday and it's, it's, and it's 10 15, this must be the Six Figures Booking Freight from Home show. I appreciate y'all joining us here today. Um, we're going to be here till about 12 15, maybe 1 o'clock. And we're going to answer some questions today. Today on the show, we're going to do a, a lot of, um, of troubleshooting. We're going to talk about the, um, the, uh, the network site that we have for individuals who are, are coming to our network and those individuals who just want to register with our network. You can do so at our um, network directory site. <coughs> so we're going to go over that site in a little bit more detail. We're also going to do a lot of Q&A today. And we're going to try to attempt to contact, uh, make contact with one of the other um, well-known freight broker trainers here in the industry, Mr. McLean. Uh, I don't know if y'all know who he is, but I think he refers to himself as Shaggy, I think. So if y'all y'all may know him. But uh, we're going to try and contact him because, as you all know, I always try to reach out to other freight broker trainers in the industry, um, individuals who have their on their own platforms, I reach out to them and, and, you know, I've made a public, you know, outreach to any freight broker trainer to come over and let's join together and create something that's never been done before in the six, in the, um, guaranteed career placement events. And, uh, he sent me a friend request. So I haven't accepted it yet. I wanted to, uh, have a conversation with him, um, beforehand. And as y'all know, I'm, I'm as transparent as can be. So I figured I'd give him a call up and try to contact him um, here on the show and, and, you know, just to see where he's at and, um, um, and extend, you know, my hand and everything. And hopefully we can, can connect and make something positive happen. All right, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I want everybody to log on, go to mydispatcher.org. Okay. I want everybody to go to mydispatcher.org. First of all, can all my students who are online with us right now, can you all see our screen? Can you see what I'm sharing? Hello? Yes, I can see it. All right, great. <clears throat> so you all can see my screen and everything. We're good to go on that. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and, and recognize some people. Today in the house, we have Ron... Emmerich. Hey, Miss Emmerich, how you doing? Nice of you to join us today. Appreciate you. <clears throat> As always, morning. We have, good morning, good morning. Uh, we have Charles Dotson. Mr. Dotson, thank you for joining us as well. We are always appreciate your presence. And we have Jonas Johnson. Um, Jonas, thank you for joining us. I know you're probably you're a little bit new to the network. Think you've been you've been joined up about maybe a week and a half to two weeks, <clears throat> but we appreciate you joining us here as well. Um, Michael Bond, thank you for joining us, Mr. Bond. And we have Yvette, and we have Mr. Flippy also. So, <laughs> thank you all for joining us on this Saturday. I know y'all have a lot of things that y'all could be doing. Um, I you know. My wife has gotten out of the house, so I got the house to myself, so I figured I'd do it here uh, instead of going downtown. they got a lot going on in Tallahassee today. Uh, uh, big, uh, they're having a, um, an Asian festival. You know, mm -hmm. A lot of the you know, Asian and Oriental foods and you know, cultures and things going on downtown Tallahassee. You know, they, you know, it's going to be going on until about 5 o'clock. So um, you know, I, we might go back down there a little bit later on. I may shoot some some video down there of, of some of the um, the Asian cultures and stuff going on down there. But today, let's go ahead and get started. All right. First of all, I want everybody to go to um, mydispatcher.org. Mydispatcher.org. That is our website, um, mydispatcher.org. I want you all to go over. Once you get there, uh, you can go and log in, of course. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up, <clears throat> okay, if you are having problems remembering your login, okay, I've had a couple of people who had problems with the logins. All right, if you if you if you attempt to log in and you can't remember your password or you put your password in wrong or whatever it may be, before you reset that password, before you reset the password, go back and just kind of slow down 
and try to re-enter your password and your and your and your credentials in correctly, because there's only one reason why you are not able to log in, and that is because you have put something in that you didn't put in when you created the account. I mean, that's that's really it. Okay, um, you know, we have we have a ton of members and. 90% of them log in, <laughs> you know, no problems. But, and and through going through the situations and talking with each individual who have problems logging in, we come to find out that they put in a, you know, a, a comma instead of a dot. Uh, they have a space between the at or have a space between one of the letters or one of the letters is supposed to be capitalized and they didn't capitalize it or it's supposed to be lowercase and they did capitalize it, something of that nature. <laughs> they, didn't, they, didn't cross a, they didn't cross a T or dot an I somewhere, okay? Because what's going to happen is if you just automatically say, well, I'm just going to go and reset my password. Well, that's fine, but it's not going to be approved right away. Because remember, we are a secure back office site. So if you reset your password, it's got to go through our approval process all over again, which means the interns have to take a look at it. They, first of all, they've got to notice it that you reset your password. Then they've got to actually take the time to go in and verify your email address, and then they have to approve that login. Now, here's what's happening to a lot of you. When you reset your password, you're immediately trying to go back in and log in. You haven't been approved yet because, remember, you've got to go through the same process again. Okay, It's got to be approved. So when you immediately try to go back in and log in, it's going to tell you that you can't log in or something's wrong. So then you do what? You reset the password again. <laughs> so now the interns are looking at what? Three or four different, you know, new login requests with four different passwords, and they don't know which one to approve. Because if they approve one that you think was the right one, but you, you put in a different password because you submitted one after that, and, and you all see the problem? I don't know. If, I don't know if I'm making sense to 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 to, to you all, but yeah, you make yeah. a whole lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. It's, the, it, the way the way yeah. it's done is different than a normal website. It, yeah, because they don't. Because a lot of websites, um, and because we have a lot of uh, back office passwords and things, we have to be very, very careful about letting people into our back office. Because when we first started out, we were not as careful. We were not as careful, and it caused us a whole bunch of problems. Um, unfortunately, there are, there are individuals who have, who have made attempts to get into our back office and disrupt what we are doing. For some odd reason, I couldn't tell you why, but, <laughs> but that has been the case. <coughs> and I hate that because, because that's sad. I mean, that really is sad, but it happens, you know, but that's, that's just what's going on. I'm not going to call it, I'm not going to call it a name, but we have some other, you know, um, trainers and stuff out there who have, who have, who have literally made it their mission to shut us down. <laughs> that, that, for, for, for whatever reason, I don't know, but they have literally made it their mission to shut us down. <clears throat> but, um, hey. You know, <laughs> all I can do is just, you know, try to show love to them and do the best we can to protect what we have. But anyway, but um, if you need to reset your password, the best thing to do is to send us a message first, okay? Uh, just re just reply to any other messages th that you receive on your subscription or any of the other messages that we've sent you. Just hit the reply button and send us a message and say, hey, I need to reset my password. I, I can't log in. And, and we will get the message. And then we will contact you and say, okay, let's go in and let's reset this together. Because what we're going to do to solve the problem is we're not going to have you to reset your password. We're just going to delete you from the membership. We're going to delete your account, and then we're going to have you to go back in and recreate another login. Just resubmit. That makes it a lot easier because then when, you, when we delete you from the contact or from the system, then you go back in and you just recreate go back into mydispatcher.org and you and you click the login button right here. You know, when you click the login button you know, on your account, and instead of logging in, you're going to create a new login. You're going to create a new account. Use the same email address, 
but then choose a password that you can easily remember. And then while we're on the phone with you, when you submit it, we'll see it right then and there, and then we'll know it's you. We won't have to go and verify it. Why? Because we're on the phone with you. <laughs> we can go right in and we can click approve, and then you can go back in and log in right away. Now, doesn't that make a whole lot more sense? Yeah. Yeah, we've had several of you who are on here now, well, not several, a couple of you who are on here right now who have gone through that process and found out that it's much easier to do it that way than to just keep doubling down <clears throat> on trying to um, 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 re trying to reset your password. And then on our end, we're looking at four, five, six different you know, login attempts and all different passwords, and we don't know which one to approve. Okay? So, um, but... That's troubleshoot number one. <laughs> so hopefully everybody got that and they understand that um, and everything. Okay. Troubleshoot number two. Let's go here into here and go to the who are we, which is, if you all know, we did make some changes. We have made some changes to our um, who are we page. Now, your who are we page on our website. <clears throat> Hold on here. It's loading up here. Give me a second. Make sure I'm on there. Computer's running kind of slow this morning. I don't know why. I'm up front and with the All right, here we go. All right, there we go. All right, if you all notice we did make some changes to our Who Are We page. Um one of the changes that we have done, we have gotten rid of all of the uh, all of the extensions because we no longer grant, you know, we, we no longer do the extensions. The Who Are We page is a little bit shorter now, uh, more concise, easier to, to to navigate. It gets right to the point, tells you who we are, you know, what we're about, things like that. You notice you got a couple of you got a couple of links here now that that uh, that were not working links before. They are working links now. If you notice here where it says Reputation Built by Service, you know, it goes into you know, <clears throat> that's what the acronym RBBS stands for, in case you all didn't know. When you click to contact us, it is immediately going to take you over to where? The National Dispatchers Network Directory. It's going to take you right there. Okay? So now you don't have to you know, scrounge around trying to look how to how to get to your network directory page. Okay? So it's right there in the contact us. So we want them to contact you all. And if you're registered on there, all of your company information, everything about you all will, should be there in your profile. Okay? Uh, the Get to Know Us uh, um, statement here is still the same. You know, fast, friendly, fully functional. Our network of independent dispatchers. And, oh, I forgot to change that. I am changing that to owner-op business managers. That will be changed today. Our network of owner-op business managers are well renowned throughout the United States when it comes to finding the right freight for your needs. Our team is up for every challenge. With the skill and experience our clients have come to expect, we always stand behind our work with customer satisfaction being our number one priority. Contact us to learn more about our incredible network of owner our business managers and how they can help you. Then when you click to learn more, that should take you right over to the where the National Dispatches Network Directory. Okay, so anybody that wants to contact you all or see what you all have going on, they can click the directory or they can click the members area. When they click the members area, they're gonna pull up each and every last one of you all who are registered with the um, site. Now, now some of you haven't registered yet. Some of you haven't figured out how to how to update your your photos. Now, I see what you all mean. I'm going to contact Miss Linda McCoy, and I'm going to contact Ms., uh, this person here, and I'm going to try and figure out how they did it because when I tried to go in, I created another login just to see what you all were talking about because a lot of you all were saying that you couldn't go in and, and uh, update your pictures. And I see what you were saying because I created a different login, and you're right. It doesn't give me anything there to, to, to click on. I don't know if it's, that's for the first 24 hours <clears throat> because we had some members that have come back and said they were able to do it now after it sat for a while. But for some reason, um, I, 
when I first created it, I'm not able to go in and upload that picture. Uh, someone, someone has some input? Uh, yeah, I do. I, do. Uh, I even tried. Whoops, sorry. I'm One sorry, time. Go ahead. I, I actually contacted TransLane, um, that member, and she was shocked. She said, I didn't realize that my picture was up there. I said, well, it's up there. Well, and, how did he get uh, his picture up there? She said she really does not know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh... <laughs> and I've been trying for a few weeks. Well, we well, well, we got to figure this thing out because I, I went on and I was trying to do it myself and I couldn't do it. So the only other thing I can think of is I am going to go ahead and go into the the administrative area of the site where I created the site at, and I'm going to make everybody administrators. That's the only way I can think of to solve the problem. Because on the administrative account, the site owner you know, account is very easy. Okay, I, I mean it's is is very simple. I can click on it, and right here where it says um, I can edit my Info. Where is that here? Seeing at oh, uh, maybe I'm not in. Maybe I'm not joined as the administrator. So go on your picture. But, yeah, it's not doing it. Uh, uh, just hold on for a second. I think I'm not. I think I'm not logged in on here as the administrator. I think I'm logged in as bam right here. I created a moderator account. Yeah, see, I'm logged in right here as a moderator, like you all are. I wanted to see what you all were more experiencing, so I created a new uh, login, a different login as moderator instead of as the administrator, okay? So and it's, you're supposed to be able to go in and either click that, or you're supposed to be able to go in and click where it says edit the profile, okay? And when you click edit the profile, you're supposed to be able to click upload because Right here, where it has the image, there's supposed to be an image picture there, or or a placement holder there, and then you're supposed to be able to click upload because it says right here, click upload button below. Okay, but I don't see an upload button below. That's the problem. Unless, hold on here. Unless I'm missing something, but I don't see an upload button below. I see a cancel. I see a submit. But I don't see an upload. I see where you put your signature. Now I do see here in the in the about me. I can I could upload an image there by putting in the image URL. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I could do that. Now if anyone, if you all want to know how to get your image URL, basically what you do is you find your picture, you right click on it, and it has a thing that says you um um. um open in a different window. When you open that, then you just go up and copy the web address of that of that picture. And then you put that in and then it will appear there. Okay? But um I don't know what I'm so the only, the only other thing I know to, to do is to go in and make everyone an administrator because as an administrator See what it says. Just yeah. As an administrator, let's go to Google. As an administrator, when I'm logged in like this, as you can see, see now that now I'm logged in here as an administrator, right? And I can edit my profile here, right? And you see here, I can actually see. I can remove this. I can add a picture. You know, I can actually do something with this. And that's the only thing I can think of is to add you all as administrators so that you will be able to, ha I guess, have this. And that should give you all the same administrative control to go in and and um, and uh, update your pictures, your profile pictures. So we're going to try that, and we'll see how that works out. Um, so after today's broadcast, I'll, I'll just go into the system and make everybody administrators so then you'll be able to Take care of getting your pictures loaded up. Okay? Thank you. Okay. All right.
So. I am. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I've tried on Google with Chrome and I've tried on Firefox. Okay, yeah, I, know, yeah. I, I mean, uh, my suggestion is since you're the administrator, maybe you keep it as moderators and just go in there and under the moderator account, it's maybe you, there's a spot you can allow us to with the photos and things like that. Give us permission. Now, yeah, that's that the reason way. why. Yeah, yeah, that's the reason why I made y'all moderators. Because before you were just members, and then right. I made every, then I made everyone moderators, hoping that would solve the problem. That didn't solve yeah. the problem. So it seems like I'm gonna have to make everyone administrators. You know, well, because, right. because at different levels, you have different you have different um, feature controls. Right, right. Right. But there's but there's but there's, but there's nothing there for for me to go in and, and click to allow you all to do a certain thing. That's just part of the feature controls of each of of each level of membership. Oh, okay. So so the only other um, option that that I have right now is to make everyone administrators and see if that solves the problem. Okay. All right. All right. Will that be for a limited time that we're administrators? Is it what now? Will that be for a limited time that we're administrators just to give us time enough to yeah. edit our okay? Yeah. yeah. You get like uh like four to eight or seventy two hours, you know, to go in and upload your whatever whatever and then um those that get there uploaded, then I go ahead I go back in and then make you moderators again. And then that, that way you have your picture up and everything, and you have your logo up and everything that that, that you need. Because you can still do the 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 other areas. You can you know create your profile, but you just can't upload your picture. So uh, we just want to want y'all to be able to go in and be able to upload your logos. Okay. All right. No problem. No problem. Um, but as you can see, you all can create blogs. Now look. Uh, I like this. I like this this aspect. Now, the, the great thing about this um, network directory, this is basically. Hold on for a second here, y'all. This is basically Mr. Emmerich. I'm gonna have to hold you down, hey, Mr. Emmerich. You got a lot of what's called background noise. No, that's Mr. Flipping. There we go. Uh, Ms. Flippin, I had, to, I had to mute you there for a second. You had a lot of background noise. All right. The great thing about this site is this. Okay. Um, no, you all do not have any um, – um, um, we, we don't provide for, for you toll-free extensions um, anymore. We don't provide the fax lines, and we don't provide the dedicated domain email address. This is why we created this area here to give you all an entire – um, branding site. The great thing about this area here, it allows you all to be able to go in and you can brand yourselves. Now, this network site is not just for our members. This network directory, I'll, I'll take that back. The directory is not just for our members. The directory is for anybody, anybody who is in trucking, shipping, training, Logistics, you know, dispatching, brokering, whatever the case may be, you can go and register on this site for free. Let me let me repeat that. Any and everybody can register on our network directory for free. Okay. Now you can't access our network site for free, our uh, back office tools and resources, but you can. Join the network directory and list your business and what you do and what you provide and what you're looking for for free. Okay? Now, while now some people say, <laughs> I've had other friends say, why, why would you do that? <laughs> because it's about building. It's about building that community. This is the whole point of networking. We want to build a, a, a community of industry professionals who all come together and you all share information. You share knowledge of what you do. You share 
ways of helping each other. You should share, you know, what you are looking for. If you are a trucker and you want to connect with a whole bunch of independent dispatchers and brokers and shippers and everything, we want to have a directory where brokers, shippers, dispatchers, you know, owner operators, everybody come together so you can go in here and you can say, okay, look, I'm looking, oh, here's a dispatcher right here. And I can pull up, I can pull up this person's profile. I can look at what this what this person has going on. This person can post blogs as this as this person has done, has posted, uh, has published sixteen blogs. Sixteen blogs that's been published. Okay? And what these blogs do is they create valuable content to showcase your brand. Okay? Four universal rules of the road every truck driver should know. Now, <laughs> of the road every truck driver should know. That's kind of an interesting title. But, you know, uh, and this was created by what? That's me, Calvin. That's you. So, see you know what I'm saying? And see, here we are talking about your company, Dominion Freight Logistics LLC. But that gets you noticed. And that's the whole point of creating branding material. Because you want people to feel like, well, this person know what the hell she's talking about. <laughs> Even though you may not. <laughs> but <laughs> not that you don't. I don't know you do. <laughs> but it gives the impression that you are knowledgeable about the industry. And everybody wants to deal with who, someone who is knowledgeable about the industry, right? Right? Right. right. And you probably had a lot of fun creating these blogs, right? <laughs> and see, and not only that, guess what? You can go and you can share this stuff. You can share it on Facebook. You can share it on LinkedIn. You can share it all over the place. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So you can give yourself more exposure other than just here. See, see the little share button? Look at that. Facebook, Twitter, uh, email, pen, whatever that is. I don't know who that is. <laughs> they got all these stuff. They got LinkedIn. Then they got 181 more places you can share it to. Look at this. I mean, I don't know if you all understand the power of networking. This is the whole reason why we created our network, mm. to give you all the tools and resources for you all to be able to expand your businesses, to be able to promote your you know, your businesses, to brand your businesses, to you know, to it's free advertising. Okay? Yep. And, and 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 let's face it, social media connects you with the world immediately. Right away. Mm -hmm. You know, you post this stuff on Facebook and Twitter and some of these other <laughs> you got 180, you got 179 of these places I ain't never even heard of. <laughs> but you're able to share. You're able to share with the world. All these different social media sites that you can share with. Okay, that's the whole reason why we we created this, so that you all can share. And if we have, if we share this enough, and enough people join this directory, before you know it, what we, what the, you know, Ideally, what we want is we want a whole bunch of shippers on here. We want a whole bunch of brokers on here. We want a whole bunch of, you know, owner op business managers on here. We want a whole bunch of owner operators on here. We want a whole bunch of, you know, everybody who's in the industry. We want them on this site. Because then what we have done, we have created a industry social media page. Mm. That's right. We have we we literally created our very own industry social media networking site. Okay, that you can share, cross share on other social media sites, you know, and things of that nature. And thus being able to do what? Bring yourself more business. So that's what it's all about. It's about creating a presence so that you all can 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 can, can can build and be successful. Okay? All right? So, but that's what our network is about. Okay? A lot of people, you know, they look at us and they, and, and I understand that a lot of people do, 
they don't understand what we do. That's why, you know, it's easy for people to be against something when they don't understand it. Okay? That's why that's why our network has grown so fast because when other you know, freight broker trainers and things out there who are doing things the you know, the the old industry way and that's fine if they wanna you know hey, look, there's nothing wrong with doing it that way. I just happen to I just happen to to believe that this way is a more effective way for especially for individuals who are new to the industry. Okay? This is a more effective way of bringing them along without them spending a whole bunch of money on brokery, you know, bonds and, and insurance and, and and having all that liability and then you know <sighs> <laughs> Let's spend some money to see if I can actually do this. <laughs> a whole bunch of money. Let, let me get in debt <laughs> to see if I can do this. I, that ain't right. <laughs> okay. I, 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 mean, I just don't see the need in that. Especially now, when, there's a, when there's a legal way for, for you to do it and help each other and be able to, you know, learn at your own pace and operate at your own pace. Well, one day it would be great if the, the, the freight agents would be a little bit more uh, with the rates for the carriers to better than what they do. Man, they got those rates are really, really low at times. Well, you mean the shippers? No, the the, the, the brokers. Like well, you, uh, they they would have paid like a dollar, twenty dollars <laughs> for a load. Yeah, uh, but. Yeah, but that's like miles or more. Yeah, but that's not all those. Uh, a lot of them. There's a lot out there like I, that. I understand that, but if 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 there's a lot of them like that, but there's also a lot of loads that's paying what two fifty, two fifty three dollars, three dollars, yeah. four dollars a mile, right? right. right. So right. so so here's my thing: if a dollar seventy five don't suit you, then don't look at a dollar seventy five. <laughs> right, right. I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying, look, right, right. look, 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 look. <laughs> the glass can be what? Half, half full. full. Or, or half, half empty. empty. <laughs> right, right. It, right. In every situation, the glass can be half full and half empty. Now, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be. <clears throat> no, no, no. I'll be quiet. No, no. I don't want you to be quiet. <laughs> this is why we're here. This is why we are here, okay? Because we have a lot of of individuals in the industry who who express that same type of sentiment. Okay, they have that that same mentality or approach to the industry. Okay, they look at the things that really don't even concern them. <laughs> because I tell y'all all the time, do what? <laughs> don't worry about all the noise, right? Basically what I'm saying is if it if it don't tickle, if it don't tickle your fancy, then don't sit your fancy down there, <laughs> right? <laughs> Look, if something is not for you, why would you even be bothered with it? If the dollar fifty, the dollar seventy five, the dollar sixty five cent rates ain't for you, then don't pay them, don't pay them no attention. Go to the ones that do fit for you. That's why, Mr. Hodge, <laughs> I'm created. The what? The straight dispatch. Exactly, the straight, the straight dispatch. Right. It's to combat and solve and, and and address that main problem. You see how he, you see how he took a problem within the industry, a concern with with in the industry, right, right. and and we was able to help him to look at it and come up with what a solution, which created right. what an opportunity, which created what a business for him. Yep, yep. I mean, I mean, come on, now. come on. I mean, yeah, that that's greatly. I mean, look, yep. and each and every one of you can do the same thing. Yep. If you if you're taking a look at the industry and if you see things within the industry that don't seem, you know, like they could be better, well, guess what? They can be better, and guess what? You can make it better if you set your mind to it. Right. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you got. You just got to find out whatever that that one little slight difference to make yourself yeah. stand out. And in the meantime, in the meantime, when you're looking for and finding freight for your carriers, 
Okay? In the meantime, just look for what your carriers want. Don't worry about what they don't want. Don't worry about the dollar sixty five cent mile um run. Don't worry about the dollar seventy five cent, the dollar twenty five cent. Don't worry about that. Why? Because that ain't for you. Mm-hmm. Only go look for the ones that's for you. And there's plenty and and, and, and don't let nobody tell you I don't I don't care what you say. There is plenty enough free out there to satisfy those individuals that need those two dollar two twenty five and up per mile. Am I lying? Nope. Exactly. You're right. Now, now, I'm a firm believer there's no such thing as cheap freight because there isn't. The cheap freight is a necessity in this in this industry because you have some companies that are able to take advantage of the cheap freight and are able to profit from the cheap freight and are able to pay their drivers a good wage on the what? Cheap freight. Yeah. So don't knock cheap freight. Cheap freight is what keeps this industry going. Because if it wasn't because if it wasn't for cheap freight, there would be no industry for you all to make money in. That is true. Okay, so so we need to stop knocking, you know, just because there's cheap freight. Look, yes there's cheap freight. But if it ain't for you, then just zip it up and then move on to something else. All right. Why why would you talk bad about something that you can't use no way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that don't make no sense to me. Right. That don't yeah, make no I, sense I don't, to me. I'm trying not to talk negative about anything, but man, yeah. some of that some of that stuff out there just don't make no sense. Yeah, yeah, but, I mean but you know, Yeah, but 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 that's not just you. You're just expressing the sentiment that's being um 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 Echo throughout the industry. You go to any social media, any trucking social media site, you see someone crying about cheap freight, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, but why would you cry about something you cry about something you can't use? Yeah, right. I mean, seriously. I mean, your time is much better spent. What going to the freight that you can use, right? Now, mm-hmm. now, 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 let, now, now. I'm about to touch a nerve here. <laughs> because seventy percent of those individuals who are crying about cheap freight also cry about the good paying freight. They don't want to take the good paying freight. <laughs> Why? Because eh, it's got it's got some type of hair on it that they don't like. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you, there's always going to be something. But it seems like <laughs> no matter what you what's going on, there's. Yeah, it's like you can't satisfy. It's like right, okay, right. okay, you cry about you know the cheap freight, which you, which you can't use anyway. So why you so why are you crying about that? But then when us as business managers we find you some good paying freight, you know, well, you know, yeah, I, I got too many tie downs. I don't, I don't, I don't feel what I ain't got no. I don't want to tarp. I don't want to tarp. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't. I don't, I don't. I don't want to run my refrigerator uh, uh, um, no less than uh, seventy degrees. <laughs> what is, uh, I'm something stupid. I mean, I, I, really? Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, really? Are you here to make money? Are you here to have your ego? <laughs> Well, so, so, look, 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 look. If this industry was not creating well-paid business owners, owner ops, brokerage firms, independent dispatch firm, business managers, shippers, and the likes, you think this industry would still be going on now? No, I mean, probably not. I mean, everywhere you look, no, no, seriously now. Everywhere you look, you see everyday individuals who just jump in the truck and maybe two years ago or three years ago, and then they turn around and they're buying their own trucks. And next thing mm. you know, they've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten trucks, and they're making, you know, a half a million to almost a million dollars a year in revenue. And these are individuals that you thought couldn't, couldn't, couldn't balance their own checkbooks. But now they're business owners and running trucking companies. Yeah. You think people would be able to do that if this industry wasn't productive, if this industry wasn't doing something right? 
So instead of complaining about the industry, look at what's right in the industry for you and focus on that. That's how you become successful in this because this industry is big enough and it generates enough money that to go around for everybody. It really does. It really does. And what a lot of people fail to do is this. When they can't achieve the level of success that they want, they find a way to make it someone else's fault. Right. They do. That's just human nature because no one wants to be wants to see themselves as a failure. They don't want to see themselves as coming up short. You don't want to see yourself as inadequate. You know, that's uh, oh. <laughs> you know, it gives you chills even thinking about it, right? Mm-hmm. But guess what? Sometimes, sometimes you have to recognize the failure in you to become the what? The winner or the successful person you want to be. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay? So don't get so defensive or so, you know, try to make everything someone else's fault. Mm-hmm. Whenever I whenever I run into something, a problem or something that I'm I can't get done or something not going right, the first now I used to be that mm-hmm. I was one of the main ones that used to blame everybody else. I you know, it ain't my fault. No, 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 no. But <laughs> a funny thing happened. A funny thing happened when I became homeless. <laughs> a funny thing happened when I became homeless. I had to sit down, and I was faced with the reality that I caused my own situation. I was faced with the reality that I put myself in a situation where I could not adequately support my daughter. That I could not, you know, keep, you know, pay for it and keep a roof over our heads. Now, regardless of what the circumstances were, were the I played the main role in it. Mm-hmm. And that's the case with every situation. I don't care what situation it is. Everybody says, well, that wasn't my fault. Yeah, it was. I mean, some people say, well, you know, it isn't the, well if you wasn't there, it, that wouldn't have happened. If you hadn't did this that led to this, that wouldn't have happened. If you hadn't made this decision, that wouldn't happen. If you had to just listen to your conscience instead of doing something that was against your conscience, that wouldn't happen. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. Ultimately, you are the one who is responsible. Okay? So we have this as as and as entrepreneurs and as business owners and business managers, we have to learn we have to learn to accept. We have to learn to accept our shortcomings in order to, then once we do that, then we have something that we can work we can work on. Now if you want to acknowledge that you have a shortcoming, you ain't gonna never work on it. Right? Right. And you're gonna to continue to do what? Keep you know, professing that it's everybody else's fault, but guess what? You ain't going to never make no gains. You're going to always be right where you at right now. So, but, anyway. <laughs> um, anyway, that's that. All right, all right. Before we get into this, um, the question and answering phase, let's try to contact this gentleman. Uh, let's see here. Let's go over here to Facebook. And hey, you all know this gentleman. I'm pretty sure you all have seen his stuff on um YouTube. Seen his stuff on YouTube. Um I've I've actually I've actually been an admirer of the way he conducts his um 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 his broadcast. He's you know, he's straightforward. Um you know, like myself, no. his name is Mr. Greg McLean. I think he goes by the YouTube name of Shaggy. I think is what he um what he um I've never seen him before. Recognized himself as, but um he sent us a friend request. Um he he just sent me something back saying this weekend is not a good time, possibly Monday during the day after 3 p.m. All right, so we're gonna wait until Monday to contact him. Uh, so uh, wait till Monday to contact him, and hopefully we have him on the show um, next. Next Saturday, hopefully he'll be on the show um, next Saturday. 
Um, let's see him a thing about see it sounds great. Sounds great. Have a blessed weekend. Mm, I'm stuck there now. Now, look, this is the way, ideally, that I would like to have relationships with every freight broker trainer, dispatch trainer, logistics trainer in the industry. Okay? Because this is basically what, what just what, two, two professionals who are in the same industry, right? So why should we have a conflict? I mean, I mean, seriously, why should there why should there be a conflict? Why can't we get together and form and create something that benefits everyone? A lot of people, anyway. Well, I mean, well, everyone who who is interested. Right. I mean, I mean let's face it. <coughs> this this type of work is not the hardest type of work. You know, in the world, it's actually pretty, it's actually rather easy. Yeah, when, when you yeah. Think, I mean, it's easier than being a farm carpenter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's right. Damn, that's <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, I was a farm um, carpenter. You know, I was a farm carpenter for um, Ajax um, Construction, and you know, when you're out there in in, 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 in that Florida heat, 101, 102, sometimes 110 degrees in the middle of the summer, and you're doing a groundbreaking where you all you got is pick shovels and <laughs> and pick sparks and shovels, and you're digging in the in that red. Florida, Georgia clay, and uh, I mean, seriously, you got you literally have people falling out, boom, hitting the ground. Life flight comes out, picks them up. You know, that's hard work. This, this right here, look, look where I'm sitting at, y'all. I'm sitting in my condo, AC on a computer, right? And same thing each morning. Get up, you know, contact some. Some curious, make a pitch or two. <laughs> hey, how you doing? My name is Calvin Butler with the National Independent Dispatchers Network. Uh, let me ask you a question. How much money do you need to move your truck? <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. This is not hard work. It's not hard at all. The hardest thing you got to do is listen to a rejection or two, right? Right. That's, that's uh, it. I got a question when you got a moment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, would it be, is it, I mean, I don't like to call people. Uh, I mean, since the tra- carriers are, are during the week, there's a lot of the carriers are, are driving. And they don't, I mean, the owner operators. It, would it be all right to call them over the weekend or not? Yeah, that's the best time to call carriers is on the weekend. Why? Because they sit in the truck, you know, on their thirty on their thirty four, right? They're on their thirty four hour reset, right? Most likely, yeah. Yeah, they just sit in the truck. at home. They, most of them are sitting at a truck stop. A lot of them ain't at home. <laughs> right. Well, time, I mean, you may catch some at home, but but look, that's all right too because if they did not want to pick up the phone, they, they just would pick up the phone. Right. Okay. But but most of the time, you're gonna catch a carrier. He's gonna be in his truck at a truck stop on his 34. You know, you know, sitting back there in his bunk with his AC blowing or whatever case may be. He may be in the truck stop or whatever case may be. I mean, you know. <laughs> Nothing for you to you know, give them a call and say, "Hey, you know, this is such and such," and, and just be respectful. Now you may want to. Now you may. Now you may even want to. I'm throwing in there. I know it's the weekend. I don't want to take up very much of your time. Just give me two minutes. I'm pretty sure that you'll be glad I called. Right. Then go around to you. What you call it? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Well, good. Well, I mean, I mean, I, I'm trying to do things out of respect. I don't like to bother people a whole lot on the weekends. Like it's with. Being a agent, you know, trying to contact shippers. I mean, I basically do that during the week most of the time. Yeah. And, but in, I mean, those people on the weekend sometimes work, but people that you need to talk to is usually there during the week, not on the weekend. So that's, that's why look, I asked that. Look, look. Anytime you're you're contacting some, some, some someone, uh, you know about your business and 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 you can reframe that and say, look, 
I, I know you're on your home time. Um, do you have a load I'm ready for Monday? Because if not, I can find you something. How much money do you need to move your truck? You can go right into it that way. And they'll probably say, well, sh- well since you asked, <laughs> you know, well, since you asked, no, I don't. And I, uh, no one's ever really asked me that. Cause look, how many of you have called up and hit that pitch and, and the carry has said, no one's ever really asked me that uh, before? Uh, I am not. Okay. I haven't really asked it that way myself. Yeah. I, look, I, I've heard that from a lot of carries. You say, you know what? You know, you know, not very. And people call me up and ask me how much money do I need to move my truck. <laughs> you know, they always start off with, "Well, I got loads that's paying this." And I, they ain't asking nothing about what he needs, right? Yeah. So that's why our approach is the way it is. Okay. How much money do you need to move your truck? You know. So well, shoot, since you ask, you know, <laughs> I, I, I like to leave out of here, out of out of Mobile, Alabama, on Monday. Morning, <coughs> find me a load. I'd like to have some pins about four dollars a mile. Okay, let's see what I can do for you. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. Then you go into because we understand that not all carriers can move freight for the same amount of money because you yeah. have expenses that other carriers may not have. With that in mind, if you tell me you need the four dollars per mile, guess what? That's all I'm gonna look for. If you tell me you want loads that doesn't weigh more than thirty six thousand pounds. I'm not going to look for loads that's weighing 37,000 pounds because you ain't going to run that. If you tell me you don't want to go up in the mountains, I'm going to keep you on the bottom half of the United States. So you know when you see my number and your call ID, I got the kind of loads you want, going to the places you want to go, paying the kind of money you want to get paid. Now, where can I send my dispatch agreement to? <laughs> well, I, mm-hmm. look, yeah. look, look, all this is is you just have to become a salesperson. Okay. Right. No, that's all this is. This is sales. Now I'm a natural sales. I, 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 hey, you know, you know, I started off in life with a stuttering problem, and ever since they got that fixed up, boy, they couldn't shut me up. <laughs> yeah, I'm that. <laughs> you, know, you know, I spent the first twelve years of my life just repeating stuff over and over and over again. I'm a butt, 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 butt. So when I got when they got that straight, now. <laughs> I had a lot to say. <laughs> I had stuff yeah. that was back. I had stuff that was backed up. <laughs> so look, <laughs> look. <laughs> a lot of you all, uh, you just have to learn to to take what areas you're lacking in and turn that into your strength. That's what I right. mean by looking at some of the things you are falling short in, or some of your failures, and you have to acknowledge that I'm not good at this or, I, or, or I'm a failure at this. And that word failure is not a bad or a negative word. It just means that you recognize that there's some things you have to work on. Mm, right. and, and until you admit that you have things that, that you have to work on, guess what? You're, you're not, not going to change it. Exactly. You're not going to start working change. on it, so you're never going to change it. That's all, right. all that means. Okay? <laughs> all right. All right. All um, right. Let's get into some Q&A, some Q&A. Let's get into some questions. I know you all have some things that you all were um, 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 wanting to uh, um, discuss and things. First of all, let, let me go ahead and address. Uh, <coughs> I am, I am um, um, under the weather. So, well, not under the weather. I'm under my condition. I was recently, you all know I was recently died, diagnosed with diabetes. The problem is I am... Um, I seem to be allergic to some of to the uh, the 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 most prescribed type of insulin. So mm-hmm. and and that becomes a problem because now I have to concentrate. I have to double down on really concentrating on my diet and and how I eat and my in in my activity. So I have to become a lot more active with my workouts and walking and things like that <clears throat> because with 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 without being able to take Direct, you know, the insulin that everyone else takes to to moderate this and to keep my blood sugar levels. I have to concentrate more on my diet to make that happen. Okay, like make sure I eat every two hours, like clockwork. <laughs> make sure I have something. Make sure I eat the right type of thing: fruits, vegetables, you know, plant based, you know, nuts, that that, that type of stuff. <clears throat> make sure I eat the right type of things at the right type of days. So, and they and they have some alternative 
stuff that they can do. They they they're looking at um the, my VA doctors. They're looking at um 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 uh, uh, a different dosage or a different type or a less more less or more potent type of instrument or something that they're trying to. Uh, they have different things that you can use that that they can use to um, to combat that allergic reaction, or looking at other medications they can give me on on top of that to kind of block the allergy or something of that nature. So, but either way, it causes problems with my breathing because you know I have problems breathing in a you know, lot. So and and it says at some points if I'm having problems breathing, I can't talk a whole lot. <laughs> so. <laughs> if y'all notice, um, I do have what seems like a like a persistent cough, but that's that, that's due to the condition. So sometimes on Monday nights, uh, what, what what we're gonna start doing instead of having our live orientation every Monday night, we're gonna do it every other Monday night. Why? Because the orientation is always the same, and they're recorded. Okay, if you pull up the latest. Um, orientation was orientation 8.0 or 9.0 or, or, or whatever it is. It's the same as 8.0, 7.0, 6.0, 5.0. .0. So there's no really there's no real reason to do it live every week, okay? Because it's the same orientation. <coughs> and, and, and the reason why we, we why we do do them live in case something changes, then we'll update it. <coughs> but every but every other week should be sufficient on the orientation. We will. Continue to uh, make an effort to do the Tuesday night spot trainings every Tuesday, 8 p.m. to 8:45 p.m. and the Wednesday Q and A every Wednesday from 8 p.m. to 8:45 p.m. Uh, I am working with other freight broker trainers like Mr. McLean. I'm going to work with him to see if <clears throat> see if he uh, would like to um, um, join us as a as a uh, you know, guest trainer. You know, some nights or whatever the case may be, and it'll allow him to get more exposure for his platform as well as ours. Uh, you know, that's always good. Uh, we have a large following on YouTube. He has a large following on on YouTube. If we started doing some cross branding, that that would you know bump his numbers as well as our numbers. And as you all know, <clears throat> um, most of most of the the good freight broker trends or I or should I say the popular ones, <clears throat> we earn a lot of revenue from our YouTube channels, from our viewership, ad revenue, things things like that. Um, I know we currently receive 55% of the ad uh, revenue from each one of our YouTube videos. And when you have numbers like, you know, 189,000 views, you know, in a month, and, you know, 3,200 or 5,000 subscribers or whatever the case may be, and the average watch time of your videos before someone takes a break, before they click that pause button or whatever, is almost an hour and 10 minutes. That advertisers, eh, they like that. <laughs> so so they start offering some, you know, some okay dollars to be on your YouTube videos. It, in your channel. <clears throat> so that is a good stream of revenue. Hint, hint, for those of you out there who have your own companies, you know, start creating some YouTube content. Create your own YouTube channels. Not only will it bring more business to your logistics firm, but you can also turn those, you, if you get enough people to watch what you are doing, and if you're entertaining enough, you start gathering them you know, more and more subscribers and people are watching your videos, then advertisers will start making, um, they'll make, um, what's the word I'm looking for, proposals to you <coughs> to post their ads on your videos. YouTube will come to you once you get to a certain level, once you get a certain number of subscribers and your videos have a certain number of views, then YouTube will make you a proposal to monetize your channel. Okay, and depending on how popular your channel is, will be the amount of you know advertising dollars on the percentage of the ad dollars that they'll be willing to split with you. <clears throat> okay. Now, anytime you can you know turn your conversations into compensation, that's good. Okay, so that's something you all might want to keep in mind. Okay. Thank you. Um. Oh, another thing before we go, uh, uh, before we get off into, hold on, 
Uh, got a phone call coming in. Give me a second here. This is Cal with RBS. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, man. Who's this? Okay, I'll, I'll swing by there. I'm right in the middle of my broadcast with my students right now, but I'll swing by there a little bit because um, I wanted to check on and see and see and see how Irene doing too. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, with two will be here then. All oh, right. Okay. All right. Uh, that was my cousin. My aunt was in the hospital. She wanted me to drop by. She had something for me. Uh, but anyway. <clears throat> um, Oh, what I wanted to share with y'all was this. Um, I know we don't give you all the fax numbers and then, but I had uh, shared something with someone on 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 the fax. You all might want to look at this. This is a pretty good e-fax um, thing, and I'm gonna give y'all the link here. And it's only like five, like four dollars and ninety nine cents a month. Okay. Um, but you can send, I think, at here, let's go ahead and click on it so I'll show it to you all. <clears throat> this is it. Um, it's called sendthefacts.to. Okay? Um, it's, uh, pretty, it's a pretty good company. I've checked them out. I've, I've you know, done the test runs on it and everything. Uh, it works great. Um, it's easy. Uh, you know, and they have a basic for four ninety five. They have a light for five ninety five, and they have them have a professional for nine ninety five. You know, even the basic, you get a hundred pages per month. Okay, you can send and receive faxes. Okay, dedicated fax number, and each additional page after the one hundred pages is just five cents per page. Okay, that's your base, and you get a thirty day free trial. Okay, and of course the light, uh, it goes up to five hundred pages, and then the pro, one thousand pages. It's not bad. It's not bad uh, for, 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 for those of you who like faxing instead of, you know, um, uh, um, scanning and emailing and things like that. But I know a lot of you all um, have 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 asked me about the e-fax lines and things of that nature. So um, hopefully that will be of help to, to you all. Ms. Linda McCoy, how you doing? Let me get rid of your... Ms. Linda McCoy. Ms. McCoy, can you hear me? I'm trying to unmute you. She's unmuted, or she was unmuted. There you go. Ms. McCoy. You got her muted now. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to unmute her, but... You had her unmuted a minute ago. I oh, know. What happened? Oh. Uh, okay, I'm fine. You hear there me? you go. Yes, Miss McCoy, how you doing? Miss McCoy. Am, yes, sir. How was you able to load up your picture on your uh, profile? Oh boy, did I have to figure that out? <laughs> we were just we were just discussing that. <laughs> the first part okay, of the broadcast. Let me let me go over here and look at it and see what I had to do. I'll tell you step by step. It was a process, but it was real simple when I figured it out. Hold on, let's let's let let's, let, let, let let us figure this out too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I saw your name, I said, you know what? She she got it figured out. So <laughs> let's figure this thing out. So, all right. Okay, so right we're in the the members area. Matter of fact, members? I'm gonna okay. go to. I'm going to go to mines, the one where I am not an administrator, and I'm going to try to do mines. Okay. Let me see. Let me click on that. I have one here where I'm not an administrator. And? Here I am, right here. All right. Hold up. I'm in the wrong. I'm in the wrong one here. Let's go to this one. Here we go. All right. Now I'm in mines. All right. Okay. Go so, to, let me see. Edit profile. Okay. I'm in edit profile. Okay. All right. Then you see under edit profile over there it says uh, add or remove picture. No. See, it's not, you don't it, see it, that? No, I don't see that. You don't see profile image. I see profile image, but I don't see an add or remove picture. Does, see, it, does it say anything to do there? 
It says click. I right. I see where. It's, hold on. Let me try something. Nope. I don't. There's nothing there. I'm looking at it. Say down. Okay, you see. Okay, you're on edit profile. Yep, I'm on edit okay. profile. You, I, you name, profile image. Yep. Did you click on profile image? Um, there's nothing there's, to click on. Really? Yeah. Now, let me ask a question. Which um, browser? I'm in, in. I'm in Chrome. Okay, mm -hmm. let me. Let me try Chrome. Let me log out. So this one, but I no, I'm, yeah, that's right. Let me hold on. Let me log out. Let me sign back in. Not as RBBS. I have to sign out. I was just trying to. All right. It just, let's see if it looks like it's automatically allowing me back in on Chrome. Oh, here we go. Sign in again. All right. Let me get rid of this. Get rid of that one. Let me put in my other one. I love the image that I picked, this man standing over the Grand Canyon <laughs> on, <laughs> a, on a rock. All right. Wow. All right. So now, let me edit my profile now. Mm -hmm. Now I'm in Chrome. Now I'm in Chrome. Okay. Name. Okay. I see it says name. Profile image. I see where it says profile image. But it's okay, where, okay. Where it says name, is there a place for you to put your name there? Yes. Another? Trying. Okay, when you see profile image, is there anything that it's asking you to do? Yeah, it, says, it says over here to the right, it says click the upload button below. There you go. There you go. That's but, it. But there is but, no upload button. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> there is no upload button. And I think that's the problem that a lot of us were looking at. Uh, there is no upload low button. To, click to the. Click. It says click the upload button. So therefore, that button, that means that button is not right there. It has to be someplace. Exactly. So it says you see click, the upload button it says, anywhere? It says, it says click the upload button below. Below. Select the image now. I'm okay, looking at scroll below. down. Let's see. Below Anything? where? Below. I don't see an upload button. Mm. Me, okay. Let me, it tells me to remove picture. No, I mean, well, you know, I can't have the option to remove the picture, but I'm not doing that. Yeah, I mean, I can do it from my other account. When I'm the administrator, but hold on, let me see if I can. Let me. Let's try something. Nope, there's no other button. Click the upload. If it click the upload button, that means that 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 button is not right there. It's somewhere. You yeah, don't I don't see it anywhere. That's what I'm looking for. I'm hmm. looking for an upload button. It took well. me a minute to figure it out. It really did. And I'm just like um, OCD, so. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like it's supposed to be able to, to do it. Because if it did it for you, it should be doing it for, for um, everyone else. Mm -hmm. Unless there's something it's that. Count. I see the submit button. I see the cancel button. I see the. It did take me some time to figure it out. It was it was a uh, a challenge, hmm. and but it but I did it. And when I figured it, when I did it, it was like, oh wow, this is easy. Second account. But I did it. Profile. Time zone. Profile image. When if you put your cursor on profile image, does it lighten up, highlight, or anything? Turn into the hand or? No. Nope. No. I even tried highlighting and seeing if, it, if anything else came up down there that it wasn't seeing. Have we tried right clicking it? Nothing. Well, yeah, try that. That. Uh, it was. There. It was odd. It was a little different. It really was. Copy. No. 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 I, yeah, I want. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make everybody the administrator because we had already figured out that I probably just make everybody the administrator. 
for for a limited time, and then they can go in and. Huh. But I don't. It may have been something like that that I that would. Let me see here. Let me go back to the beginning to the front and see. Okay, email. No, that's not it. Okay, because you because, because you're listed as a moderator too, right? I was, you know, initially in the beginning, it was something I was listed as something else. Okay. What well, was? But were you able to do it as just a member? Because others were others were different. I do remember that. And I said, oh, I'm special. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because, yeah, they were one thing and I was something different. I don't remember what it was. Oh, because yeah, it says here that you are a moderator. Ah, and I see some people are just members. So this person is a member. Member, moderator, moderator. Hmm. Moderator. Okay. Okay, what was the other one? Members. Members, okay. Yeah, that must, yeah, may have been yeah members and moderators. Okay. So what is it now, member? No, you're listed. You're listed. You're listed, you're listed as a moderator. Huh. See, I'm I'm over here. I have an account as site owner, which mm -hmm. I'm able to go in and update my picture and stuff on that. But I can't update. No, it you know what? In moderator. the beginning, it was it was not that. It was something else. What else was? What else did it show up as? And and do you remember? Well, is he the member, moderator, administrator, or site owner? Oh, well, no, maybe it was a moderator. But see, you're oh. not the only one. This person was able to do it. Uh-huh. And that's the one, Calvin. She said she don't know how she did it. She don't and know how she, she did it. <laughs> I don't, I mean, yeah, I, I don't remember. How, but that's what I thought I did, management, manage account, and then... Edit profile. It button is not on the page. But there's the button is not on the page mm. for you guys. It's, well, I have a button that says remove picture. What if I remove the picture and then, okay, that's what I'm, well, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to well, remove well, the picture. Well, see, yeah. I have that same button. It is my, blue. Yeah, I, I have that same button not on this account, but I have the button on my other account. Oh, okay. Huh. So I, I was going to take it off, but I don't know what I did with that picture, so I want to put keep nah, that. I'll take it off. Leave it on there. Leave it on there. Because I have the same button, but mm -hmm. I can't. But, but but I couldn't do it on this one. Hey y'all, uh, everyone. It's Jonas Johnson. Hey Jonas. All right. I was just able to load my logo uh, using Firefox. So how did you load yours? I actually went to. Uh, let me get back to it. Shoot. Uh oh. <laughs> wow, what happened? He said, uh oh. He said about, he said that <laughs> word I teach my babies not to say. <laughs> uh, I was uh there we go. I actually went down to where it says uh site membership right below that um on your homes, I guess on your main page, I guess where you get set up at. Yeah. Where you edit your profile. Yep. All right. And that little uh, settings button right to the uh, right, to the left of site membership. Where is that? What site membership? Where is that? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Under members, under home, where, directory, where? Yes, it's on It's on the main, it's on your profile. Okay, there it is, there it is right there, site membership. Yeah. Okay. Under members? Edit, manage membership. Site okay. membership. Okay. So, so you click that, right? What? I click that little uh, settings, that little... Symbol there that looks like a a tie or whatever. Uh -huh. Right. And then I went to edit profile. Oh. And then I clicked on profile image, and it took a couple of seconds for it load up, and then it and then it was able to say uh, upload photo. Yeah, same where we at, same place we were at. Hold on, 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 hold on. Let's try something here. Did you? Did, did, you, you would see mine up under uh, East okay. Silver Logistics. Okay, uh, uh, let me ask you a question. Are you displaying your age? I, I did not display my age. Okay. Are you displaying your gender? I did not display my gender. Okay. I'll try to see if that has something to do with it, but obviously that don't have anything to do with it. Right? <laughs> uh, 
Hmm. Okay, you want to, what, under general, general information? Oh, site membership. Yeah. That's what this is, site membership. Now, for those of you who are watching this, um, what you call it, we are, remember, remember today's um, episode was on troubleshooting. So that's what we're doing today. We're troubleshooting some of the problems that we've been having that that, that, that have been arising within our um, our um, um, network directory site. Oh. Our network directory. So hmm. so we're just trying to figure this out. And I figured this would be a good way for us to do it since we had everything. We had having the people on yeah. board. So. Did that but, bring up? Did that area bring up the uh, profile image button? Not for me. Not for me. It doesn't have either. I, mm -hmm. I just have profile image. It seems like some people are able to pull it up, and some people are not for some strange reason. I'm not mm -hmm. certain why that is. So here's what I am going to do. I am going to make everybody the administrators. Um, uh, and then uh, you all can tell me if that. Works. You can send me messages or whatever it is that works. Uh, uh, okay, down at the bottom under public membership, under edit account, does that did, does everybody have that checked? Edit account. Public, public membership. membership is that button checked? Yeah, I have a check. Yeah. Hmm. And then over its end, there's a minus sign, a little red button that says a mi there's a minus sign as well. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's not it. Don't display my age. That's checked. No gender. Hmm. Let me try something. Let me change something and see what happens. It did take me some time to figure it out. It really did. But then when I ah. started, it, what, what? Hold on here, hold on here, hold on here. Now I got a little picture here that doesn't show anything, but it says male. Mm -hmm. let me, now let me try something. Nope, that didn't do it either. <laughs> I thought I was on to something, but that didn't do it. Uh, well. Hmm. Notification preferences. Tell me when somebody comments on what's called it. Edit account. Okay. Okay. You know what? Go over to edit profile. Let me look and see what you have there. See if it's similar to what I have. Profile image. Okay. Go go down a little bit right there. Click the upload button below to select the image that you want to upload. I don't, there's not a button there, is it? Yeah, but there's no button there. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. There no. is no upload button. Mm -mm. I see a submit button, a cancel button, but no upload button. Mm. All right. All right, well, we're not going to spend all day on that one. All right. Uh, let's move on to some other questions, okay? Uh, other questions okay. and concerns. Uh, but we, but... But what I'm going to do, though, um, to um, to um, I'm, I'm going to make try to make as many connections with other freight broker trainers as possible. Hopefully, Mr. McLean, um, you know we can we can help each other out. Um, so, um, he has a he, he, he has a, he has a pretty good platform. Um, uh, some of you all may know him as Shaggy. I don't know if oh, you all heard yeah. of him. Now. Yeah, um, I am Shaggy. But he has reached out to me. And uh, wanted to, you know, become friends on Facebook and stuff because I made a, a public, you know, outreach to mm -hmm. other Facebook trainers for us to join together and to, you know, create something that would benefit everyone um, that's coming into the industry. And, and he's the first and only one so far who have reached out to me. So uh, we just extended our invitation to him. We just went on Facebook and, and, um, and um, you know, um, um, just we just exchanged some messages and things, as you all can see here. And we're going to get together on Monday, and hopefully, after our meeting on Monday, uh, we'll be able to, you know, um, do some um, some cross branding and and help each other out, like on days when I'm not really feeling up to, you know, um, doing a broadcast or some type of training, whatever, whatever he may want to step in as a guest um, broadcaster or, or guest trainer. And that way he can, um, you know, use that use that broadcast on 
on his YouTube channel, as well as I can use it on mine and vice versa. If he has some, some things that he's busy doing and he would like me to step in and do some training on his behalf, I'd be more than happy to do that, and he can use that on his on his YouTube channel. I can use it on mine. So, um, you know, I mean, there's no reason that professionals have to be at, at each other's throat. <laughs> I, mean, I don't understand that. This industry is big enough for everybody. Uh, you know, I've, you know, when I was a mortgage broker, I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> you know, I didn't have beef with the other mortgage broker that was that was that was you know, right across the street from us, because <laughs> there were enough people out there looking to buy houses and refinance houses and things like that for everybody. So, I mean. What's that all about? I, 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 that I don't understand. That 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 that's the thing about the industry that I don't that I don't get. Um, everybody it's is. It's not just this industry. It's just it, it's in this industries. Everything, mm -hmm. politics, political, golf is. It's yeah, just but that that, it, that sin part of the human yeah. green anger. I, I can understand being competitive, but. Competitive does not have to overflow into let me destroy your business or let me try to bring you down or let me do this, mm -hmm. this, and that. I had a gentleman when he, and I'm not going to call it a name, I'm not gonna, but when he, when he first started out, when he first started out, this is back when we were, uh, we, had, we had just coined the phrase and just uh, did our, not a copyright, but we did a, uh, 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 oh, what's the other thing? It's not a copyright, but we did a, uh, I can't think of it right now. But we filed something the way that we were the only ones able to use that phrase when it comes to this industry. Learn, earn while you learn. Remember we was tagging that in everything we had. The RBBS, earn while you learn logistics or, or, or learn freight broker training. Okay. Um, um, um. Oh, shoot. I just had them to my tongue. <laughs> uh, uh, it was, it's not a copper. Trademark. trademark, thank you, thank you. Yes, we had we had filed a trademark for it, and he had just came into the industry, and he started using the earn while you learn freight broker training, and our you know we, you know our attorneys they sent him a little you know thing uh, letting him know that you know um, you know you know we appreciate you know uh, you know you coming into the industry and you know we wish you all the best uh, you know it you know. But 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 you but that that term as is used in freight broker training is trademark, okay? And they, I mean I mean it was it, it was a nice it was a nice little letter that they sent out to us, you know you know they know that if you needed help with anything we'd be more than glad to work with you and I would be more than glad to work with them and whatever this is and that and so we sent it out to him and um um he responded by you know. Seemingly to be okay with it, I said, "Okay, great." I see. I said, "Yeah, you can use earn while you learn, but you just can't use it in conjunction with freight broker training." You, you see what I'm saying? There's no, you know, trademark on this phrase "earn while you learn," but the "earn while you learn freight broker training" that phrase, okay, was trademark. Okay, when it comes to freight broker training, now he could have said "earn while you learn training," "earn while you learn you no know, logistics training," "earn while you learn you no." Know, uh, he he could have changed it up freight dispatch training or whatever the case, you know, anything. But, you know, but anyway, he responded back. And, and so he said, hey, how you doing? This is that, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, this is so-and-so and so, -and -so whatever, whatever, whatever. So I responded back with, with, with hello, and how can I assist you? And he immediately went straight into, <laughs> you know, I use what I want to use, and this, 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 and that. I said, okay, well, look, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm just letting you know that it, that it's a trade, you know, it's a trademark, and you know, you may get a cease and desist, you know, from our our legal team, you know, this is that, and then he he went right into, you know, you know, you know, my platform is better than yours in the way I, you know, the, 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 I was like, okay, well, if you think your platform is better than mine, then great, <laughs> you knock yourself out, or whatever the case may be, right? So <clears throat> after that, er everything you put out was 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 like a direct copy of what we were doing. <laughs> I mean, when he tried to do his pricing, it was exactly the same. He tried to monitor his program exactly, you know, from ours. 
And then, <clears throat> um, you know, at the time we were posting, you know, our memberships, the people who were signing up and how many members we were getting this, this and that. We were posting that on Facebook and stuff. And, and, and I don't know if it made him feel some type of way, but then he contacted me again, and he, he started sending a whole bunch of inboxes, just a whole bunch of whole bunch of them. I mean, it was like every other, every week it seemed like I was getting an inbox message from him. And the content of the inbox messages were, you know, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, the stuff you, you know, teaching or whatever, whatever, is it, it's not even this, it's not that, you know, we're more this, we're more that. I said, okay, well, great, you know, I'm happy for you, you know, good luck to you, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, well, apparently what happened was he wound up not being successful at that. So then he tried to switch gears and become a kind of an anti-broker or anti, you know, where he was, I guess, started putting out platforms that were basically just downing all freight broker trainers and, you know, and, and trying his best to expose scams and, and all this other type of stuff. I said, okay, that's fine. Great. <laughs> you, know? you know, we got nothing to hide. <laughs> you know, we are who we are. We're transparent. So when that didn't work, and then he switched gears on another level and he tried to do something else. Then he just then he just started attacking us directly, you know, just you know, calling us out on on his broadcast and devoting his entire broadcast to 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 whatever whatever. And he would send me messages and say, "I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna, you know, dismantle your business." And this, I said, well, you know, "Knock yourself out," <laughs> you know, you go right ahead. <coughs> so, and but my point is this. Instead of doing all of that, wouldn't it have just been easier, easier just to get on some type of working relationship and help each other benefit? I mean, wouldn't that have been easier? I mean, look at the outcome. The outcome is we're still going strong. Not only are we going strong, we added 171 new members last month. <laughs> yeah, that's about the average that we've been averaging around 140, 150, 170 members every month, and 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 and, and we continually put out a, a a public. We put out a public um, invite to any freight broker trainer, instructor, um, logistics trainer, dispatch trainer, instructor. If you are a freight broker trainer, instructor, we would love. We would love to connect with you. We would love to work with you. We would love to work together and create something this industry has never seen before. And that's a standing offer, even to the ones who have talked bad about us. I ain't got nothing against you. <laughs> you know, if you want to, you know, bury the hatchet, you know, so to speak, which we don't have a hatchet, <laughs> but if you want to, you know, take that hatchet on our back, you know, if you want to, and you know, come on around. I mean, we'll still welcome you in, and we'll still work with you. Why? Because it's only going to benefit us. Okay, and and and, but that's just how I see it. Okay, that's just how I see it. That's how I how I choose to 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 run this business. I can't speak for how they're gonna run their business. But I can only choose to run this business in that in that way. Now, am I sometimes harsh when it comes to um being forthcoming about what I think this industry should be doing? Yes I am. Because the industry for a long time has been operating in certain ways that have not been conducive to productiveness. And, and you all know what I'm talking about. You all know I'm right. Okay? Uh, you know, you've had a lot of people that have come into this industry. They spend a whole bunch of money becoming a freight broker, and they and they don't make it in money. They haven't, I mean, they, I mean, they just haven't, they've spent all this money on on training programs and this, this, and that, and, and, and I mean, lots of money. I'm not talking about, you know, $39 a month. <laughs> I'm talking about, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven thousand dollars, and all they got was some instructions. That's it. No tools, no resources, no back office support, no network. You know, none of that. No ongoing training. None of that. Just you know, how to quote land rates, 
how to calculate cents per mile, rules, terms, regulations. That's it. Okay. Now I just happen to think that that's not worth two, three, four, five, six, seven thousand dollars. I just don't. Okay. Now, now if you take offense to that, I hey, 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 ain't ain't much I can you know. I, I don't got much to say about that. That's just you just take offense to it. But that's just how I feel about it, and I'm not the only person who feels that way about it. Okay. So, but my invitation still stands to any freight broker trainer, any logistics trainer, any person out there who is doing this and they want to connect with us to, to create something that's better for the industry, you know, I'm all for it. All right? Question and answers, Q&A, Q&A, Q&A. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, do you think that it's a good idea um, to put, when we're negotiating, uh, the um, well, not negotiating, but when we're I'm going to say negotiating the rate confirmation sheet. Should we and now I'm going to say negotiate for detention detention fees for our owner operators at that time, no matter what. Okay, as as a, as a owner op business manager, okay, yeah. that is it is your job to make sure that that rate confirmation sheet is. Somebody got to be on whole music. <laughs> Somebody got to be on whole music. I don't know who that is. Uh, Somebody got a television set in the background. We can hear that. Who has a television set in the background? Something going on. We can hear that. Okay. Make sure you turn that off or turn it down or mute your mic or something. But as business, um, as, as owner our business managers, it is our job to make sure that, that our client, which is your own operator, is uh, protected in all ways, and make sure that 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 you try to get him the the, the most positive and beneficial um, 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 compensation package on each load as possible. And one of those is you don't want our own operator just sitting there, you know, three, four, five hours and not getting paid. So yes, it is proper for you to ask about the detention pay. Okay. Um, some companies have a standard de detention pay. Now, you don't want to cross the line because you are not a broker, okay, mm -hmm. and, and, and you are not the owner-operator, but you do represent the owner-operator. Now, it is okay for you to negotiate the, the detention fee. It is not okay for you to extensively negotiate the rate, okay? Mm -hmm. Big big difference, okay? Because remember, as a broker – is really the only person who is really can do that type of negotiation with the shipper. Now, you negotiating with the broker, you don't want to cross the line over into you trying to become a broker because you because you don't have an authority, you don't have a bond, you don't have an incentive. But you are the contracted business manager for that owner operator. So, when you and remember, what is the statute? Dispatchers are. Bona fide agents, as they're described in the statute, can do what? You can locate freight, right? Mm -hmm. You cannot take ownership and post loads, right? You can locate loads, but you can't take ownership of freight. You can locate freight, you can't take ownership. So in that limited capacity, your job is to look for the loads that fit or exceed your carrier's criteria. Mm -hmm. You're not. The, it's not your job to go and look for a freight that's beneath your carrier's criteria, and then try to put, try to convince the broker to bring it up to your carrier's criteria. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you don't want to cross over into the area and get yourself in any type of compromising uh, position of you trying to act as a broker. Okay. So you always want to keep yourself legal, uh, uh, legally covered. But yes, it is well within your uh, gravity of responsibility and scope of your contract for you to do what? Negotiate that detainer, that uh, detention fee. Okay? Thank you. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, now I got a question about that. Mm -hmm. What well, she was now, only time you, now, what do, you, what do you mean by you, you have to wait until they get you got, you got to make sure 
that the uh, carrier meets the criteria for the detention, uh, the detention paid. Yeah, before, it was, before, yeah, before you, before it's, uh, you can uh, request it. Yeah, but the only criteria that a carrier has to be for the fishman is what being at that shipper in that door waiting to be loaded or unloaded for more than what two hours, right? Right. Well, you got to be on time too. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He has to be on time. He has to be on time. But all things, all things, I'm considered, or all, all things being equal, as they say. If and he is, he is absolutely right. If your carrier is on time, okay, which means the carrier can't show up 20 minutes late, <coughs> you know, after his 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 allotted time, because they have. So they have you know, certain, certain time slots and other carriers that they have to service at certain times where the kids can be. So, but if your carrier is on time, which means if your carrier has that sign-in sheet, it must be signed. So when they come in through that gate, when they say that they need a signature, you got to make sure they got a signature on there with the, with, with the what? Time stamp, right? Mm -hmm. Make sure it has that signature and the time stamp on it. Is that time stamp and 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 you can, and it's okay for you to ask your broker what is the scheduled um, um, time slot. What what from from when to when do I have to be in there? Do I have to be in there exactly at this time, or is it, or what or what is my window? What is his window like? From um, he must be there between the hours of seven a.m. and seven thirty um, a.m. or seven a.m. and eight a.m. You see what I'm saying? So what? Figure out what that window is. As long as he's within that window, as long as he has a what, a, a clean and proper transport, you know, trailer, you know, everything is the way it's supposed to be. Then yeah, he qualifies for his detention. And and make sure that the shipper, because not all shippers pay the detention either. No, as well. Exactly. Not all shippers pay detention. But. It's something, but it, but but it is, but there have been many instances where the shipper did not pay attention, but the broker was able to do what? To either get the detention pay, or up the what? The rate, the freight, the exactly up the up the the posted rate. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So there are different things that you can do to say, look, if, if, if the person with this shipper doesn't pay the tension pay, it is well within your right to say, well, if my carrier has to sit there for more than two hours, are you willing to adjust the rate? Okay. That's not negotiating. You see what I'm saying? Because you're, you, you, because you, what, what you're doing is you are, uh, what, what's the word, not negotiating, but you are advocating on behalf of your carrier for his time. Right. That's what you're doing. Now that's the difference than negotiating the rate. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. It's kinda it's kinda like an addendum to to, to the rate. <laughs> if this happens, then this happens. Mm -hmm. Now if that doesn't happen, then the rate stays where it is, right? Yeah. Exactly. And and Calvin, is that is that um somewhat of a uh industry standard? If the carrier has been there on time um, uh, with a signature and and it has been stamped and they've been sitting there for so it, two hours. Yeah, it's 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 pretty much in the industry standard for time to pay detention is two hours. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much if if if, if you're there for, for longer than two hours. So then you start getting your detention pay. That's detention pay. I, I, I look. When I was with um with, with Covenant, and Covenant was good at, at getting their detention pay. What? Now you can want to say about Covenant Transport. You know what I mean, yeah, you run a lot of miles and you run because it's a team truck and you know the truck never stops. One drive, one sleep. One drive, one sleep. You know, but boy, they paid well. You know, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. I mean, Fifty six cents a mile. You know, if, you know, if you got all your, you know, your hazmat and your squeak and your and your passports, all that type of stuff, you know, 50, you know, up to fifty-six cents per mile, and uh, paid to the truck, 
and the truck was averaging seventy nine hundred miles per seventy nine hundred miles per week. So that means each of us was getting about thirty five fifty, thirty five seventy five on the uh, thirty seven fifty on the miles, and we were each getting fifty six cents um, per mile on that thirty seven fifty. And you do the math on that. That's a pretty good pay, man, for a company driver. <laughs> you know, you know, company had a guarantee. If you did not make a thousand dollars a week, they paid you a thousand dollars a week. Mm. That was a covenant guarantee. <laughs> okay, you know, you know, you know they, 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 they'll give you the they'll give you the runs. Okay, you know they give you the lows. They, I mean, they they, they run you to death. <laughs> and if you're willing to go, they're not going to show senior. You. you know, um, but you had to be willing to go because you know if you were one of those carriers that. Well, I don't want to go up in the mountains. Then that thousand dollar guarantee did not did not apply, because if you were turning down a certain percentage of your loads, then you did not have that thousand dollar guarantee. And Covenant was not a forced dispatch, really. Did not a forced dispatch. You could you could turn down loads. Okay, you could say, well, no, I don't want to, I don't want to run that one, or I don't want to go there, or for, for whatever you no know, whatever reason, you no, know, you, you could do that. But <clears throat> if you was one of those carriers. And me and, and me and my partner, we, we we ran. We didn't care where we went. We were up in the mountains, up in the snow. It, it didn't matter to us. <laughs> you know, we we, we, we were. <laughs> you know, we wanted to experience it all. You know, we was you know ready for the challenge. So we made great money. Okay, um, but Covenant was real good about getting you your detention paid. There were some areas that we went to Covenant went with Covenant. And if we were sitting there alone in two hours, we were getting a hundred dollars an hour. After that, mm. and that's pretty good money. <laughs> that's pretty yep. good. Especially yes, like, like when you go to the FedEx, and they got you sitting there for five, six hours waiting to get loaded. <laughs> I mean, I mm. I have sat I have sat for seven and a half hours at a FedEx. Distribution center, where to get loaded? Seriously, pull over right over there. Over there, going to sleeper. <laughs> After two hours, it's all hundred bucks an hour. You know? Chair McLoy. No. All right. Next question. Next question. Next question. Next question. Anybody got a question? All right, well, let's go over this real quick. Question. Yes, ma'am. And who are you speaking with? Ernest. Hey, Ernest. Hi. Well, I've been trying to um, look at the load board. I don't, I'm very fresh <laughs> into freight, and I just signed up a few days ago, so I'm mm-hmm. just trying to learn how to navigate the load boards. And All right. It seems to me that maybe because I'm just on my tablet, just on the iPad, maybe I have to be on a laptop. But it looks like a lot of the brokers aren't listing the prices of how much they're paying. Okay, most brokers don't list the list the prices that they're paying. Nope. Okay, that's why you have to go through the lower boards and find the lower boards that are that have more price listings or rate listings than others. That's why some people like certain lower boards, some people don't like other lower boards, things of that nature. Now the question is, which low boards that that that, that you can, I like direct freight, as you can see here. Okay. Okay. Let's go to direct freight real quick. Now, if y'all notice, we changed our login to direct freight. In case y'all didn't know that, now. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So remember that direct freight logins have changed on direct freight. My app button sometimes sticks. I don't know why that is. <laughs> that got to be a cute. <laughs> I don't know how that got to be a cute. Okay, there, there we go. go. 
Give me a minute. Oh. <clears throat> My shift button be sticking sometimes. Uh, come on. Let me do it this way. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to my tablet mode. Okay, I don't know what this hold on here. It's, it's not letting me. My shift button is not working. All right. They got me in or not? That may it may have got me. It may not. Hopefully. All right. Let's just try Texas here real quick. All right. You see here. This is why I like um, direct freight. If you all would notice, it has something here that says pay rate. Y'all see that? Mm. Hello? Yes. yes. All right. Mm -hmm. If you click pay rate, what it does is it should give you all the loads that are showing the rate. Mm. Y'all see how that see how that works? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. It's gonna give mm -hmm. you it's gonna give you all the loads that's paying the rate first. So that means every load you look at is gonna be showing you the rate. Uh, I try to stick to load boards that have that fe that have that feature. Okay, so yeah, you gotta have a, a lot of load boards that won't show you the rates. They'll show you, and they're all scattered out. But if you have a rate button, no. a pay rate button, or a rate button um, that you can click, that will show you the rate. One, two, three has that too. Even though we don't use our one, two, three anymore, they have a pay rate button. That you click on, and it will show the rate as well. Okay. Mm. How about truckers pay? Truckers pass. Hold on. Let, let's take a look at that one real quick. Uh, they don't have. I mean, it. I don't have a button, but it does show the rate. Yeah, it does. But, but what, what she was trying to say is, does it have a? Um, um, here, let's look at truckers pass. Does it have a? Um, an area a where you can just pull up all the rates. Mm -hmm. No, it, it don't. On there, it doesn't. Let's see. I don't think it does, though. I don't think it does. It may, but I don't think it does. Let's let's try it out. See what happens. Oh man. <laughs> So 
uh, rate that our carrier wants, that's when we have to call the broker with the list of routes and ask them. Yeah, see, all right. All right, you see here? They have something yeah. that says has to rate over here, but there's no way for you to mm, yeah. pull up the ones that just have just a rate. But but look though, that's the whole re that's the whole that's the reason why we have what? Straight eight. eight. That's mm -hmm. right. Well, we have the straight dispatch. That's the reason why we have the straight dispatch straight. because because even if it doesn't hold up. No, what am I on? I'm on the I'm on the wrong one. I'm sorry. I was in the wrong. Um, uh, what you call it here? I was in the wrong um, yeah. browser. Uh, but if you got the straight eight, you know, the, I can stand straight eight, but a straight dispatch, y'all. <laughs> if you got the, if you got if you got straight dispatch, <laughs> straight yeah, you're straight. Yeah. Dispatch. If you got straight dispatch, um, uh, which is that software key for those of you who don't know what it is. Uh, which was developed by one of our members that allows you to be able, be able to highlight the loads that are paying the kind of money you want um, when you're looking on load boards. Um, if you have the straight dispatch, if you have the straight dispatch, you're able to... Uh, Able to you're highlight the rates. Yeah, you're able to find the rates you're looking for anyway. So you don't really need right. to know, you know, really need to. Um, I just go on over here. I don't know why my I've got full bars on my on my internet, but sometimes it gets, it gets stuck. Here we go. Uh, but if you have the uh, that straight uh, dispatch, you're able to uh, find the loads, pay the kind of money you want to. Be paid anyway, so you, you, you really don't have that. Really don't have that problem. I'm having a problem here with this. Why is this such a problem? What's going on here? Nope, I've got all my bars. I don't know what's going on with that, but. Anyway, I might have time you. Might yeah, have got, any windows open? Hmm? Yeah, I do. I, I yeah, I do. I got a lot of windows open. I've got, um, uh, I've got Internet Explorer. All right here we go. But uh, if you've got this straight dispatch, you you shouldn't have that problem. Okay. You're, you're able to go directly to the loads and find the uh, loads that's paying the kind of money you want to get paid anyway. So, um, let me close some of this stuff out, y'all. I got a whole bunch of stuff open here. That's why I'm slowing it down. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Go back to where we were. All right, but if um, but yeah, there are certain load boards that shows you the rates. Uh, that's why I like um, direct freight. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I use three load boards. Okay, I only use three load boards. I use Truckers Path, Direct Freight, and Lane Honey. That's it. Um, yeah. You know, every now and then. Now, don't get me wrong. I've 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 got a bunch of our carriers on some dedicated freight, or well, on on what, what what we call dedicated, uh, semi dedicated freight on Warner from the Warner loads. Warner Warner is a good source for finding. Remember I told you about those short loads. Um, you can you can connect with and run in Florida. That gets you a thousand, almost two thousand dollars a day. Right. Warner has Warner has a lot of those type loads. Mm. Okay, so 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 if you call up your Warner broker and you say to him, "Hey, I'm looking for you know a bunch of short loads in such such state," 
and just whatever state you're looking for. Say, I'm looking for a bunch of short loads in, let's say, Georgia, Texas, Alabama, with Florida, whatever case may be, um, that my carrier can run, that my carrier can connect with and run at least two, maybe three of those loads per day. Do you have anything like that? And he's going to say, well, well, how many miles, you know, what's your deadhead miles you know, to, to get between loads? You may put them at a limit of, say, eh, I don't want to travel more than, you know, more than 70 miles deadhead. You see what I'm saying? More than 50 miles deadhead, 70 miles deadhead to get to the loads. You see what I'm saying? So in between yep. your loads, yeah. if you put, I mean, I mean now, now for me, 100 miles is good because you can run 100 miles deadhead. It's going to take off, what, two hours, right? Right. No, yeah, two hours. Hundred miles mm-hmm. will take off about two hours of your time. So if you run a short, quick load, if you go, you know, run a, you, you pick up a short, quick load that's like sixty miles or seventy miles, and it's paying you, you know, five hundred bucks, four hundred bucks, six hundred bucks. You see what I'm saying? And then you got to mm-hmm. go a hundred miles to get to another load that runs, you know, forty, fifty miles, and that's paying you. Five, six hundred, seven hundred bucks, <laughs> right? Yep. That's still a thousand dollars a day, right? right. There you go. And, yep. you're able to, and, 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 and you're able to make that. So, get with these. Um, Warner has some great loads like that. Uh, who else has loads like that? Um, um, Irish um, um, Schneider, JB Schneider, Hunt. Schneider, JB Hunt. They have loads like that too. So, but but sometimes you have to call up these brokers and, 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 and you have to quiz them. You have to you know put it to them and look. Uh, my carrier is looking for a bunch of short loads within the state of Alabama or within the state of Florida, state of Texas, but just wherever you're at. And they just want to run a bunch of short loads and they want to be able to run, you know, two or three of them um, per, 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 um, per day, which means that the shipper has to be willing to have that pickup time other than just, what, 8 a.m. in the morning or 6 a.m. You see what I'm saying? As mm-hmm. long as they're there before they close, you have a lot of loads that run like there's a lot of loads that run like that you can pick them up any time during the day, as long as it's before what, 5 p.m. Mm-hmm. or 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So if you find loads like that, then you're good to go. Why? Because you can pick one up at 6 a.m., run it, takes you about two hours, whatever, whatever. Then the other one you can pick up around for what, 11, 11 a.m., run it, right? You know, you can pick up around what? Around about what? Four. You know, three, two, four, so three o'clock, and then run in. Bam! <laughs> you know, you do like I was doing, the made made about about sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars a day. Go home. Chill. Do what you got to do. Okay? Uh, um, did you see where Jonas said that uh, you upload the picture when you can? Hold on. She said what now? I saw that, but I tried that. It didn't work for me. Yeah, it didn't work for me. Oh, where well, you upload the picture in the, what you call it? In the profile, in the, um, your profile area? That's right. Yeah. That didn't you, work. You, you clicked in the box? I clicked everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Not on the page. Yeah, uh, I don't know why it shows up on some of what's like, and, and some it doesn't. Um, but I, I'm just gonna make everybody administrators, and then that should solve the problem. Calvin, you said you use Lane Honey. Yeah. What's your what's the process in using Lane Honey? When I've used tried to use them and call the broker to get the, the rates, they were very dismissive with <laughs> the rates concerning uh, Lane Honey's pricing. Uh, they were like, I don't think so. Yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right, mm-hmm. all right. The thing about Lay Honey is don't tell them. Lay Honey is not the site you use. Don't tell the broker that Lay Honey is publishing their, their shipper's rate. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. You know, when she gave me the rate, it was ten times less than, you know, the published number. Mm-hmm. You know, and I said, well, mm-hmm. I have a... Well, I have a carrier that could go for uh, two twenty-five, right. and they're making like eight bucks. And she says, "I don't think so." <laughs> yeah. Look. <laughs> well, see, all right. Now, depending on what you're looking at, too. Now, you're looking at rates, or are you looking at the length? Okay. 
go to lane, honey. Yeah, but are you looking at race or are you looking at the lane? I'm well. I'm looking at the race. You know, they they post the lanes as well. Right. But I went over to the the race. Nah, without now remember with lane, honey. Sometimes the rate you're looking at is the estimated rate based on mm-hmm. based on the total number of loads that ran out of that area. Okay, mm-hmm. it's not always the exact rate of that particular. Um, yeah, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> And when you use lane, honey, yeah, you gotta you gotta use it with a grain of salt, and you gotta take it. And he asked you what I mean. When you use lane, honey, make sure I got this. They've changed it too. Yeah, it's been changed. It's been changed. It's been changed. All right, it looks a whole lot different. Um, but, all right, you see here, you got the highest demand freight lanes, okay? Mm-hmm. This is uh, price a lane and find loads, okay? Now, you got the highest um, um, demand freight lanes. You can do it by weekly or you can do it by daily. Um, you know, fastest moving by demand. You get the flatbed, whatever, 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 whatever. <coughs> Now, remember, you can also hate this. And Lane Hunter takes a while too for some reason to pull up. Uh, hold on. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with my computer, but it's. I think I got too much open. Have you cleaned your cash out lately? Hmm? You can't. Have you cleaned your cash out? It's like trash in your house. Yeah, you know. Nah, I probably haven't. I mean, I have, but there we go. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. All active public loads. All right. These are your mm-hmm. public loads. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, you notice here, it says estimate. Mm-hmm. Right? And then I hit you got verify. All right, you got something that says verify, something that says estimate. All right. Okay. Now, if it says verify, that means that may or may not be the rate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That means that may or may not be the rate, which, you know, you, but they want you to call to verify. You know, you got to call them up to verify that. So with that, um, what they open up? Uh my computer is really going slow, but you, you gotta call them, contact them to, to verify that rate, because uh, it cause it it we'll break it down. Come on, really? Yeah. All right. Now here it is. See how it does here? It shows you the miles. It shows you the shipper cost, and then the shipper rate. Right. Mm-hmm. Then, and that should be okay. If that eight, eight, uh, eight exactly. four divided into yeah. thirty five would be that three oh no, nine. No, 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 no this is telling you what. Good. Yeah, that, that's what the, it's only thirty five miles, mm-hmm. paying three hundred nine dollars, mm-hmm. which means the shipper's rate is what eight dollars and eighty four cents mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. per mile. All right. Go down. Mm-hmm. Not, 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 hold, hold up. Now you have over here what says carrier rate. Now, if you don't mm-hmm. see a carrier rate there. Mm-hmm. This right here is not a um, 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 uh, posted offer rate, eleven dollars and forty three cents. That's not telling. That that's not what the rate is. That's not what the. That's not always what the rate is. That is a posted offer rate, which means that on average, you know, brokers who have went in and they offer to run that rate, that's what they've tried to get for it. Mm. Okay, now the shipper 
has been landing somewhere around here. Right? Right. All right. And that's what the shippers t- said that they'll they'll pay three hundred nine dollars divided into thirty five is eight dollars and thirty and eighty four cents. Yeah, on average for for the load that's been running about thirty five miles, the shippers have been landing around three hundred nine dollars. That's not saying that that's what that rate is. What it's saying is the loads that run within that lane like that right there. And on average, that's what exactly the shippers exactly. Okay. So so. So you wouldn't want to call up a broker and say, hey, I see your rate is $8. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's not what that is. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, look look down here. Now, for for 11 loads in the area, in a 100-mile radius, right, these is, is are... Is that what that means, 11 is? Yes. These are, the, these are the bona fide loads that actually ran. Mm-hmm. All right. 11 and loads... Eleven loads were filled, mm-hmm. right? The shipper only paid five dollars and seventy-one cents. Mm-hmm. The broker gave the carrier roughly two dollars. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? All Lane Honey does is this. Lane, let's see, and this is why I tell people: don't use Lane Honey if you're not a seasoned professional. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, because <laughs> it is 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 not the site that you go to where you just look at the load and you see what the what you call it is posting and that's it. No, 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 no. This is for the people who know how how to negotiate. That's what Lane Honey is. Lane Honey is like the stock market. Any of y'all ever dealt with, you know, online trading? Yeah. You know? Okay, they give you all these numbers. Okay, what this company normally um, <coughs> Uh, what their shares are normally worth, then, then it shows you the dip and how far it's going down and what their shares are worth now, what they're on average worth. Then it shows you what? Over the last 10 years, this share has rise and fall and shows you the trend, right? It shows you the trend. Now, you as, a, as an online trader, you've got to determine where you think the bottom is on that stock of how far it's going to drop, right, before you start buying. Because you want to purchase the stock, because because in because I I do some online trading, all right. What you want to look at, you want to look at the history of a certain stock, okay. First of all, you want to make sure it's not just some penny stock that just pops up and then it's going to be gone um, next week, all right. So you want to look at a stock that have a longevity, but you also want to look at a stock that has volatility, which means it, it rises and it falls, because that's how you're going to make your money. You're not going to make money on stock that's always paying, it's always got a good high level, right? You ain't going to make no money that way. If, 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 if you're trying to buy... Hello, 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 hello. If you're talking to yourself, it's coming over on the broadcast. So either mute your mic or quit talking to yourself. All right. All right. If you look at that, the Apple stock, and Apple stock is always at $63 um, Per, per share between fifty five and six and sixty seven dollars uh, um, per share, yeah, you can make money in the long run. I'm talking about ten, fifteen years of owning that stock, but you can't make no short term money on the Apple stock, right? You gonna look for some stock like um, how the Meyer stock or, or 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 something of that nature, where the stock is where it might have started off at at. Twenty-seven dollars um, per share, or 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 hundred dollars per share, and then it stayed there, and then it dropped all the way down to like twenty-two dollars a share. Then it came back up to about fifty, sixty dollars a share. Then it dropped back down to about nineteen dollars a share. Then it rose back up to about eighty dollars a share. Then you, you look at that. That's the type of stock that you're going to make money on. You, you understand what I'm saying? Because it's cause it's volatile. It's going up and down. So this so so what you want to do is you want to ride it. You want to look at that stock. You want to put it on notice, and you want to look at that stock. And when that stock that was normally trading at a that two hundred dollars share, three hundred dollars share, then it drops all the way down to like sixty or or twenty nine dollars a share. When it drops back down again, like that right there, but you kind of know that it's not going to go out of business. Why? Because it's been doing that for the last 10 years. It's, it's been volatile like that over the long term. So, you, so you're so watching the history of the stock. 
So now, you're going to look at that stock, and it's pretty safe to say that that stock is not going to go out of business, that you're not going to lose all your money if you buy that stock. So what you want to do is you want to watch it, right? If it's dropping down or if it's at like around about $21, 22 $19 a share, Bye. and you've got $5,000 that you can spend, I'm going to spend about 2000 when it hits like $21 a share while it's on its way down. Then I'm going to hold and let it and ride that until it gets down to about $19 a share. If it drops down to $19 a share, I'm going to spend another 2000 and get me another $2,000 of stock at that $19 a share. Then I'm going to ride it and see how far it's going to drop again. And if it drops all the way down, I, I hope it drops all the way down to like $10 like ten dollars a share. Then I'm gonna spend the other thousand dollars. I got my whole five thousand that's invested in that stock. It started out at what? I bought two thousand dollars worth of stock when it was at what? Nineteen dollars a share. Or, or twenty one dollars a share. Then I bought another um, two thousand dollars worth when it was at what? Sixteen, seventeen dollars a share. Then I bought the last one thousand dollars worth when it was down to what? Nine, ten dollars a share. So now when it starts going back up, guess what? I'm going to wait till it rides back up to and see if it gets up past what? $21 a share. When it goes up, right, past $21 a share, now I'm looking to start selling. When it hits like $25 a share, $28, $29 a share, I'm going to sell that $1,000 of stock I bought at what? $9 a share. Why? Because I'm making what? A profit, right? If it rises a little bit higher, I'm going to sell the next level of stock I got at that $21 a share. If it peaks, then I'm going to say the last, I'm going to see how far it's going to peak up. I'm not going to sell that. I'm just going to hold that last two grand. I'm going to wait, 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 wait. If it goes up to $100 a share, I'm still waiting. If it goes up to $200 a share, I'm still waiting. When it hits 250 and then when it starts to creep back down, when it, when it drops back down to 248 247 I'm selling. I'm done. I'm cashing out. <laughs> you see how that works? That's how lane hunting works. Lane hunting is like, it's kind of like that. Which means you got to, it shows you what the trends are for that particular lane. It's not showing you the exact numbers. It's showing you what the trends are. So you will have enough information to go in on a certain load when you're looking at loads and do what? Be able to negotiate with that broker. But you gotta know, but you gotta watch the trends and know what the trends are. Like up here, you see up here where it says, this is what the average, you know, um, 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 the average, um, the offers were, this is what history shows that it has been, but when you got down to the actual numbers, that's a lot less. You saw that? The actual numbers was, was only showing you about, what, $2 per mile on what it actually paid out. So if you look at that stuff like that, you can go in and say, yeah, okay, I'd like to have that load at about $2.25 a mile. You ain't going to get that load for $4 a mile. You're going to do that. You're going to get it for $5 a mile. You're going to do that. You're not going to get it for not even at $3 a mile. You can go in and say, I'd like to have that, you know, i got to carry that, you know, the, the, once around that load, you know, if I can get $2.25 a mile, now, you might want to start at 250 and they're probably not going to do that, but then you can probably end up close to $2 or $225. Click on one of those that says estimate. Estimate. Let's, let's grab one here. With the estimate. Give it some time. It was showing the spread. Yeah. The estimate shows you the spread. Ugh, this thing takes so long. Uh It'll pull up here in a second. My um, computer is, is, is backed up. Your cash is probably full. Yeah. The ca his cash may be clear out your browsing history. Yeah. yeah. But if I do that, I don't want to clear it out right now. Hold on. No, no, no. All right. No, All right. Posted miles, posted operator. There is no operator up here. Uh, <laughs> well. Nine um, shipper cost one seventy seven. Shipper rate uh, nineteen dollars and seventy two cent. Uh, then you got here thirty one loads, thirty seven field, four hundred fifty two trucks. Y'all know what that is? Number of flatbed trucks that have completed deliveries 
to this region in the past week. Mm. Okay? You see, it's giving you a average. Right? <laughs> right? Now, you notice here. See this up here? Mm. But then you get down here. Look at that. Mm -hmm. That's a big difference, ain't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a big difference. So, the shipper you know. taking it. That's, yeah. what they, that's what they get paid. Yeah, see the ship. See, look, a yeah. lot of people. Yeah, see, a, see, yeah, see a lot of people want, want to blame. A lot of people. Somebody's got some serious background noise going on. Hello, hello, hello. They hello. Have, let's say they have this many loads, thirty-one loads. They try to keep as much as they can. You know. Yeah, the ship. Yeah, the ship is trying to look, 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 look. look. So how do you? Yeah. Hello? 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 Okay. Okay, <laughs> okay. If you're going to be having a background conversation, mute your mic. Because <laughs> it just, because you all's mics are very, because it picks up on on what you all are saying if your mics are not muted and it just grounds out everything else. Okay? The shippers are trying to make money too. They're trying to as you said, they're trying to retain as much money as possible. Okay, and a lot of people say, "Well, that's just what." No, it's not because what what's, what's happening is this: shippers have to look at being the person who 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 is managing that um, the shippers um their, their load manifest and, and, and all that type of stuff. Whoo, <laughs> that's a job. Why? Because they have to look at, they may have, you know, a few thousand loads, you know, 6,000, you know, whatever, you know, loads or freight or whatever they have. Some of their, a lot of their freight is not paying very much, okay? So they have a lot of what they call, you know, low density freight that they are not getting a whole bunch of money on, and the freight's been sitting there for a long time, which means they're losing more and more money on it, right? So they have to look at the high dollar freight that they get, like, Bam, you see what I'm saying? Some of the high dollar freight that they get, and they have to find a way to balance that out. And y'all, y'all understand what I'm saying? Because there's nothing they can do with the low dollar freight. So they got to find some kind of way to balance that out. Right. So they, so they have to take the high dollar freight and they have to cut it as much as they can to what balance out the money they're losing on what. The freight that's been sitting there for a long time that they can't pay a whole they, that they just can't pay a whole bunch of money on. You understand? Right. Uh, yeah. Well, they got to look out for the return on investment too. Exactly. It's. I mean, it, it. It's. It's. It's all a balancing act. And I know mm -hmm. on one end we only see, you know, what we see, and the carrier only sees what they see, and they're like, well, I'm not making enough money because they're holding on to a lot of money. No, that's not it. They may be. It may seem like they're holding on to a lot of money. It's just that they have. They're trying to balance it out. They're still trying to stay in business. They don't want to just, you know, pay all great money on the great paying load that they have. But then they got all that dead water they're holding. That's going to what? Drag them under, and it's going to drown them, and they're going to be done. They're going to be out of business. They ain't going to do nobody no good. Okay, so you got to look at this from a business standpoint when you're trying to. When you're looking at it on negotiation, that's that's why I tell that's why I've, that's why I've always told you all if you're if you're gonna be on lane, honey, you better know what you're doing, okay? Because you can start calling up shippers and calling up brokers, and brokers be like, what what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> you know, I'm pretty right. sure you I'm pretty sure you heard that before. You call them yeah. up, and they go, what, what the hell are you talking about? You know, because cause, cause you're misinterpreting what you know, the um, information you're getting, and and this is not per se edged in stone. It's just giving you what has ran in the past, the number of loads that ran, what the actual payout was, what the shippers were getting, and how they and this just a number of, of of how they balance out. Like you see here, when you see these little blue dots, you can put them up there, and it tells you what that is. Average percent of shippers' rate brokers have received for this route in the past day. Okay? Not enough data to complete. I mean, to, to compute. Okay? So, um, 
you just have to, you know, know what you're looking at. Okay, because it, cause it's not as black and white as you might think it is, you know. Um, and then when you and then when you gather all this information, you have to take all that into effect <clears throat> and 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 calculate that into your calculations uh, as far as how you're going to um, present that to a broker on mm. your offer or, or what you're willing to you know run for that offer. So. Um, lane honey is not one of those things that you can look at and just say, okay, well, yeah, this is the load, this is what it paid. No, 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 no. Lane honey is for the experienced business manager or broker. Um, well, for the experienced business manager, if you're calling up that broker, you're going to be able to look at all of the, you know, all of the, all of the, um, the, all of the info and be able to extrapolate, you know, a good offer. One that's has a yeah yeah when they has a high prop high probability a high probability of being accepted okay um, which it could be pretty good if you if you have a it's especially good for for a business manager that if you have a lot of carriers if you got more than fifteen twenty carriers lane hunting is a good way to go and negotiate. I mean, seriously. I mean, if you know what you're doing, and you can get some pretty good dedicated freight out of here, if you know how to do, if you know how to how to use the information, okay. <coughs> but, it, but but it's not for the beginner. So if you're a beginner, I wouldn't deal too much with lane honey until you get really experienced at learning how to interpret um, the information. Okay. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So when I um, when I call the carriers and I give my pitch, um, I, since I'm really new, <laughs> I want to be able to give a realistic number if I'm trying to give them an example of like how much, or like if I say, okay, if you tell me for instance that you want such and such amount of dollars per mile if you're going over 500 miles and if you want this amount if you're going under 500 miles what is a reasonable number for me to say so that I won't be looking dumb you're not telling them anything you're waiting on them to tell you what that number is that ain't, that's not for you to tell it's for them to tell you it's not for you to tell them how much money they need to move their truck so mm -hmm. what do I know how, what number all right, all right, you're not giving them a number. Look, 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 look. You're talking about when you call up the carrier, the owner-operator, and you make a pitch to them, right, to get them to sign your dispatch agreement, right? Right. Okay. That's not what you do. It's not up to you to tell them what their number is. You're asking them what their number is. And whatever their number is, I don't care if they tell you $7 per mile. If that's their number, that's their number. Now, they may not never get no call from me on no freight because they want $7 a mile. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. <laughs> but when you do your pitch, your pitch is designed, right, to put them in more of a reality check. Your pitch is designed, your, all your pitch is designed to do is to get them to sign your dispatch agreement. Right? Okay. Now, when they fill out their profile sure. sheet, when they fill out, now when they fill out their profile sheet, go look. When you call them up, say ring, 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 ring. He pick up the phone. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, Mr. John? How you, Mr. John? My name is Calvin Butler, and I own RBBS Transport LLC, and we are a member of the National Dispatchers Network, network of more than three thousand independent dispatch firms, freight brokers firms all throughout the country, <laughs> all working to find carriers like you. High dollar freight. Let me ask you a question. How much money do you need to move your truck? Now, not, now ain't no way in this pitch do I say, you know, do you need freight that move, pays $5 a mile? No way in that pitch doesn't say that. It says, how much money do you need to move your truck? And you wait for him to answer you. Now, if he says, ideally, you want him to come back and say, well, I need, right? Well, shoot. To move my truck, I need. Three dollars and seventy-five cents a mile. Or if he says, "Well, what do you mean?" Well, like I said, I'm with the National Dispatchers Network, 
And we understand that not all carriers can move their truck for the same amount of money because you have expenses that other carriers may not have. If, notice I said if, I didn't say, I didn't give him a number. I said if you tell me the minimum amount of money you need to make your truck profitable is three dollars and seventy five cents per mile for those that run more than two hundred uh, those that run less than five hundred miles, that's all I'm gonna look for. If if you tell me for those that run more than five hundred miles, you need a minimum of two dollars and twenty five cents a mile or two fifty or two seventy five, whatever the case may be, that's all I'm gonna look for. If you tell me that you don't want to run up in the mountains, I'm not going to look for those that run you up in New York and New Hampshire and Washington State. I'm only going to look for those that keep you on the bottom half of the United States. If you tell me that you don't want to pull more than 36,000 pounds, guess what? They don't need me looking at loads for you that weighs 36,500 pounds. I'm going to look for those that run weigh less than 36,000 pounds. And if you tell me you've got a flatbed, a reef, or a dry van, that's all I'm going to look for. So when you see my number on your caller ID, you know I got the kind of loads you want going to the places you want to go, paying the kind of money you want to get paid. Where can I send my dispatch agreement to? Now, at no point in there that I tell him that I'm going to find you loads that's paying blase, 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 or you need to be running loads that's paying whatever, whatever. I'm asking him, if you tell me what you want, that's what I am going to look for. And that's all I'm going to call you with. Okay? Okay, I got that. All right. Thank you. <laughs> that's why I meant those examples when you said if. I yeah. Something that was ridiculous I, when I say yeah. if. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like I be talking all the time, and y'all just y'all just hear the numbers. Y'all y'all don't y'all don't hear the content sometimes, but. But, yeah, it's all in your delivery. It's all in your delivery. And if you learn, and th that's why I say the most important thing about this whole thing is being a salesperson, learning how to be a salesperson, learning how to deliver the pitch, learning how to deliver a pitch in a manner that anybody that hears it, are gonna, they're going to see what, how positive it, it is, how beneficial it is, and how it is going to help them. There, there is no downside to it. The way that pitch is designed and the way our approach is designed to, <coughs> to managing their business, there is no downside. I don't care what objection they come up with. Well, how much money you charge? I ain't paying nobody more than 3%. I don't, I don't do that. I just too much doggone money. I'm not paying any. You, get, you charge more than 5%, then I, I can't. I understand. So I understand 5% makes it like a lot of money. But let me ask you a question. You know, as I always go back to you, but let me ask you a question. <laughs> that, that's, the, that's the classic, you know, turnaround. I understand. I understand. And 5% do seem like a lot of money. But let me ask you a question. If you got one dispatcher, or you're looking at loads yourself and you're not paying yourself anything except for the load amount, so you don't have to pay anything. But let's say you're looking at loads and you're finding loads that morning, you know, it's paying you two seventy five, three dollars and ten cents a mile. Good decent money. Right? And then I find I call you up and I can call you up when I got five three or four loads that's paying five, six, seven dollars per mile. Who's going to write that day? Okay? The obviously he's going to say, I'm going to write your loads. Exactly. Regardless if my fee is 10% or not. Why? Because my 10% on a $6 per mile load is still more than your no percent on what? A $3 per mile load. Right? Right. Right. All right. With that, we're going to call it a day. My dogs are hollering. <laughs> they want me to come give them up and take them out for a walk. <laughs> they, 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 they let me know what time it is. They say, Mr. Butler, it's almost 1 o'clock, <laughs> so it's time for you to come give us a walk. But I want everyone to know that I appreciate all of you all. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna wrap that up for today. Um, we will be having, uh, God willing, orientation this Monday night. Uh, this Tuesday night we will we'll be having spot training, and this Wednesday night we will be having uh, Q and A. 
So um, keep that in mind. Hopefully, I will be able to connect with Mr. Mr. McLean, and we'll be able to you know, forge a relationship and be able to bring y'all more and more stuff, and, you know, more variety and things of that nature. Why? Because that's what it's all about. It's all about networking. It's all about creating great content and delivering great content and instructions. Thank you all again. I appreciate each and every last one of you all. This has been Calvin with the RBBS Logistics Learning Center and the National Dispatch Network. And this has been the Six Figures Book and Faith from Home Show. And I'll see you all next week at the same bat channel, same bat time. Good day, everybody. Bye. Mm -hmm.